So we're going to look at the array filter method. Similar to the array map method, the array map method in the previous video we talked about how we could take an array and call a function once for each of the elements in the array. The array filter does a similar thing. It creates a brand new array from another array by running through looking at each one of the items in the array. It's going to call a function once for each of those items in the array. But this time the function is only going to return true or false. Instead of creating some brand new element to store in the array, it's just going to return true or false. If the function returns true, then the current element from the array that the function is looking at will be passed on into the new array. If it returns false, that element won't be passed in. So as an example, we've got here a variable called numbers. It is an array containing these eight numbers. And I've got a breakpoint. I just picked a, a number arbitrarily saying 30. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the array filter method three times. One time I'm going to call it and I'm going to look at the breakpoint and say, okay, if the number that I'm currently looking at is less than 30, the breakpoint, then I'm going to return true. Otherwise, it'll return false. So true, false, true, false, 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 true, true. The numbers where I return true should be passed into a new array. And that new array is going to be sitting inside of small numbers. That's what this will be. So let's do this first example. So numbers, that is my array. I'm going to call the filter method. The filter method is going to take as its one argument, a function to call. So this is my function that I'm going to call. When the function is called, filter will pass to it three things. The first thing being the element itself, the second thing being its index, its position somewhere in the array, and the third thing being a copy of the entire array, so you can compare things. Now, for this example, we only need the first of those three things, so I'm just going to put one variable here, num. This is going to be 23 the first time it's called, then 45, then 14, then 66. So each time this function gets called, this will represent one of these elements. And if I was to say return true, I just hard code it and say it's always going to return true, then this filter method is going to pass back to here basically just a copy of the entire array. So if I run this, say node array filter.js, I gotta save this first. There we go. I run that. There we go. Smaller than 30. Well, this is the entire array. This is just small numbers, it's just a copy of numbers. Because I said true. If I said false and I ran this again. It's an empty array. Nothing was passed into the array. So I'm going to check here to say, I'm going to say return breakpoint is less than, or sorry, num is less than breakpoint. There we go. This is going to check to see, okay, the number that's being passed in, is it smaller than the breakpoint? If it is, true will be returned. If it isn't, false will be returned. We'll run this again. There we go. 23, 14, 4, and 9. These are the four numbers from these eight that are actually less than 30. So that worked. Big numbers. Do it the other way. So again, take your array variable. We're going to be calling the filter method on the entire array. And for each one of the elements inside the array, this function is going to be called num will represent each one of the numbers inside the array in turn. And we do it the other way. If num is greater than breakpoint, There we are. So smaller than 30. There we go from our console log statement down here at the bottom. Larger than 30. And odd numbers we still haven't done. Now sometimes people 
like to break the functions up. Let's say this was a function that was going to be used multiple times. We could, if we wanted, remove this and we put it elsewhere in our code. And we'll just give it a name called check big. We can put the name of the function here. So if you prefer to write it this way, sometimes this can look a little bit cumbersome to some people. You can just put the name of the function, add the function somewhere else in your code, and this will work as well. Same way, the exact same code inside of here. So if I clear this out, run it again, there you go. You can see, you can see it still works. Odd numbers, let's say I wanted to extract the odd numbers from this array. Again, we can use the filter function. Here we are. Now, inside of here, we want to determine whether or not each of these numbers, represented by the variable num, is going to be odd or even. Now, there's a couple ways we can do it. One is using the modulus operator. So if you took any number, any number at all that you can imagine, if you divide it by 2, if the remainder is 0, it's an even number. If the remainder is 1, then it's an odd number. So we can use that the way that would be written. We'd say num modulus so the remainder is either going to be 0 or 1. Odd for even. Sorry, 0 for even, 1 for odd. There's another way that we can do this, which is actually faster to process for the computer, and it uses bitwise operators. And it looks at the individual bits inside of the number. Um, so if you're counting in binary, you 0, 1, 10, 11, 100, 101, 110, 111, 1000 is the way you go up in binary. And so 0, 1, 10, 11, 100, 101, 110, 111, 1000. That's the equivalent in decimal, which is what we use normally to count. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. If you look closely at the binary numbers, you'll notice that the last digit here, the last bit, if it's an even number, it's a 0. If it's an odd number, it's a 1. And it always alternates. 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And it goes like that to infinity. So, the bitwise operator, we can say num and 1. So this is the, the bitwise and operator. We're going to say, all right, take whatever number's passed in and and 1 with it. Meaning, basically, just look at the very last bit. If it's the last, if the last bit is a 1, then this is going to return 1. 1 being a non-zero number, is the equivalent to true, therefore true, meaning it's odd. So I'll save that, run this again. There we are, 23, 45, 33, and 9. Those are the odd numbers inside of here. And a little bit aside with the bitwise operator, but this is how you use the array filter method. Uh, if you look down in the comments, you'll see I've got links to the map method you can use as reference for this as well. And uh, I will have a link to the GitHub gist for this code.